Uh, Kenneth Hagin, we cut our spiritual teeth on his books and things when Roy and I were growing up. We didn't have any mentors, anybody that would stand with us and, and actually uh, mentor us as we were starting in ministry, and, and it was sometimes a struggle. And so we started reading his books, and, and he, to me, he's one of the most godly men. And, of course, he's, he's already passed, I believe, now. And, but, and another one was, um, I'm trying to think of his name. But anyway, we had two there. I, I just wanted to give this message today in the way that he gave it to me. So I'm going to be reading some comments today. And if God is in not in what you were doing, it will fail. There's no doubt in my mind if God was not with us and not in what we were doing, we would have failed because we had so many obstacles that came our way. You know, to try to, people didn't understand and, and the church we went to didn't understand because we we started ministering out and everything, and, and some of them didn't understand, and they would question us about it, but we knew that God was leading us. And so, anyway, this, ne this next one is, um, but this verse is talking about spiritual things as well. So we're not just talking about a house, this house, this church. We're not talking about the, the house we build at home, which, which is all in that, is included in that, but it also includes our spiritual house. And, and we have to be careful how we build our spiritual house, how we allow God to do it. Whatever you are doing for God, ask yourself, is this God's plan? We knew when we started it was God's plan. It just took us a while to get really going with it. Uh, people got to recognizing the fact that the anointing was upon us to do what we were doing, but at first it wasn't that way. And so if God is dealing with you about something or, or he has a plan for you and you know that, that, that but whatever you're doing for God, you know it's God's plan, keep moving with it. Don't give up. Don't give up if somebody questions you. Don't give up if God, if somebody says you need to be doing something else besides what you're doing. Follow what God's plan is. When we when we first started in ministry, uh, we got down on our face on the carpet in some friend's house, and they got on the floor too. And the first thing we quest asked God about, we knew that we were supposed to do it, but we first question we ask him is what do you want to name this ministry and I'm sure you most are, most of you are familiar with that scripture where the spirit of God is there is liberty well liberty ministries is what we all got <laughs> in prayer so praying separately and we're all in agreement and so we started we went through the whole process of becoming um nonprofit and and, uh, and, and incorporated and everything. So we had to go through all that process. None of us knew anything about that. But the uh, lady named Frankie Tiedemann, she worked in an office and we figured that she could kind of help us with some of the <laughs> paperwork and stuff, which we did. And then we got a hold of uh, Harvey Watson who set up Kenneth Hagen, I mean, I mean Kenneth Copeland and, and Jerry Savelle and some of the rest of those groups. And, and so we started. Not that we were that up there with where we were. We just wanted to do what the best thing was for what God was telling us to do. So there's a scripture. This scripture here points out that they had to labor to build it because God wasn't in it. So that scripture I just read you, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. I mean, if you're, not, if you're not finding out what God's will is for your life and, and you don't get that answer from him, you just bloom where you're planted for a while until God shows you what your, his plan is. Um, <clears throat> God, uh, get God involved in everything you do. Now, that, that includes everything. I mean, everything is everything. We all understand everything, right? Uh, so 
We know that everything we do, we need to get God involved. If we're going to plant a garden, we're going to ask God to help it to grow and, and give us the, the victory and the harvest and all of that during the planting and everything. If we don't do it and ask God for, I, I ask him about every single thing. When, before we go on a trip, missionary trip, I seek the Lord uh, and the daughter help me this time for the date for this next trip. And, of course, we questioned Mitchell and Debbie, Debbie when was a good time for them for us to be over on that side of the island. And so it all worked out, and so we knew that that, that, that was God. So we went ahead and started giving plans, telling people that when the dates were going to be. But always get God involved in everything you do. Find out his plan first. It, don't go by what you're thinking now. Cause sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I think, well, this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that and the other. I'm going to try to get all that laundry done, and I'm going to get make sure that uh, that everything has to be this, this done needs to be done. I'm going to study, which I do every morning, because I know that's God's plan. Because He called me out in my sunroom from eight to ten every day that I possibly can do it. I can't do it on Sunday because. So, uh, Sunday I'm getting ready for church and this morning I had a bad hair day so it took me forever to ever get it to lay down enough for me to feel like that I could walk out the door with it you know so but anyway the only secret to success I know is walking in line with the word of God and praying and you might want to write these down walking in line with the word of God and praying and listening to what the Holy Spirit of God says to do and then do it. So I was, when I get out in my time, the Lord, I'll say, Lord, what do you want to do? You know, because might, he might want me to go somewhere and witness to somebody or go pray for somebody or he might want me to just rest that day, you know. And I love it when he says, you need to rest today, you know. So then, and if you are doing that and you you seek the Lord, you um. You're walking in line with the word of God. You're not trying to move over into the flesh or into the, the world and what you're planning. That's not going to work. It will never work because God will never allow it to happen the way that you think you want it done. You understand? He'll always bring you to a place where you seek him and especially everybody in here that I know of as a Christian and I'm sure you seek the Lord and ask him about stuff instead of jumping out there and listen believe me I've got ahead of God before I was reading an article in a, a, a it was called the parade I don't know if anybody remembers those I mean that's back in the day and I was reading it and and I saw this place with this man named uh, Nick uh, I think his name was Nick Anderson. He started a, a ministry for street children. And I thought, that is so awesome. I would love to get involved in that. So I started crying, and, and I said, Lord, if this is you talking to me, and I knew it was him talking to me, but it wasn't the timing. The timing is is really a most critical thing in what God's called you to do is the timing. And so I said, Lord, now, because my pastor's wife hardly ever called me and unless she, you know, need me to touch up her hair or something. And, and I said, uh, Lord, if this is you and you're trying to show me something, I said, have my pastor's wife call me. It wasn't 10 minutes the rank phone ring. She said, Jeanette, I really don't know why I'm calling you, but... But uh, I just thought I'd just call you, you know. And I said, well, I know. And I started crying, and I told her what it was all about. Well, see, I thought when we, the door opened for us to go to, to uh, the, the mission field, and, and really Roy was ready. And, and he, what, it wasn't that he didn't want to go. It was just that he said it just wasn't the right timing. So this lady called us, um, Jean Stokes, some of you know of her, she called me and she said, Jeanette said, we're getting ready to go on a mission trip. I wanted to know if y'all wanted to go with us. I said, oh, I'd love to go. Roy said, Jeanette, I can't go now, you know, because he had to work. 
And I, he said, I can't go. He said, we can't go. And I said, and I got on the floor and I cried out to the Lord. I said, Lord, I really want to go. I really want to go. I got that message, that word from you about working with children, street children, and, and this has got to be it. <coughs> Excuse me. But it wasn't. It wasn't the right timing. But right before that, I got an opportunity. I was a school crossing guard, and I got an, off an opportunity to go on the police force. And uh, they, what they were going to do was, was uh, put me in with uh, juveniles, you know. And I thought, oh, this has got to be it. And, and so I talked to the Lord about it, and I told him I'd take it. And I would wake up in the night, and the Lord would say, no. <laughs> he had another plan. I won't go through all the details, but I did pray that if it was not God's will for me to go and take that strength and agility test that day, that I would... Um, that way that I was supposed to go. That was the last thing I was supposed to do. I said, if you if you, you go, and I said, Lord, I, uh, if I am not supposed to do this, and, and I just wanted to make it sure for plain and for sure, I said, don't let my car start. Well, I got out in my car, and I started it up to go, and it would not run. It was a brand new car, and Roy loved that car, and I called him, and I said, uh, Roy, I said, the car won't stop. You're going to have to come and take me, you know, where I'm supposed to go to the driving range. And he said, okay, but I said, I just can't take this job. He said, what? I said, I said it had civil service, you know, things and, and all that. It was, a, it was a good job, and it was a good pay and everything. And he said, um, I said, I prayed. And I said, it's, I know it's God that I'm not supposed to take it. And I said, if, <laughs> he said, Net, I just bought this car. It's a brand new car, and you won't, it won't start. He got upset with me. He didn't chew me out or anyway, but he got kind of upset that I would pray that his car wouldn't start. <laughs> well, anyway, we got over that. And then we got invited again to go back to the, to the, go to the Dominican Republic, and then we were ready. Well, the first time we went, we fell in love with the place and the people. They're awesome people, and they were so good to us. Well, we, we uh, went for oh, every year, twice a year for a while, and then when God called us into pastoring, and that's another thing that I put the skids on, I tried to, on the skids on, on uh, <laughs> actually it was him that was wanting to do it, and I was not wanting to do it. I said, this people call us and they said we got this building, we we don't we need a pastor and uh, and we you know, and in other words they heard about him and they Roy and and they we want want him to come so, he said well I'm gonna go meet with him I said oh no Roy I said we're evangelist, we don't we not pastors I had a pastor's wife's friend she was a friend and she was, she was really treated pretty bad by the congregation she was in. And, uh, and so I said, I don't, want, I don't ever want to be the pastor's wife, you know. And so he said, well, he said, I'm going to go and talk to him anyway. When he came back, he, he said, we're taking it. I said, oh, no, Roy, we can't do that. I tried to put my, you know how it is when you want to stop and you put your feet in the sand and you try to stand there and, and, you, and you know that you've got to do it anyway. And, and I remembered what Joanne Thompson said one time about her and her husband because she's up in, from TV 16. She said, you know what? The Lord told me, told my husband to start TV 16. And she said, I did not want to do that. She said, I wanted us to spend our retirement eight days sitting on the front porch rocking in a chair. And she said, God spoke to me and he said, if you don't do it, I'll give him somebody else that will. So I believed he was getting ready to take her out, you know, because I didn't believe in divorce, you know, and, you know. So anyway, she went ahead and did it, and, and there was a lot of people been blessed over the years, and we've done a lot of our ministry out of there. Well, <clears throat> I didn't understand not being able to get that working with those kids and see when actually when I went for that for the uh, city physical to get in going to the police department I'm coming I'm making another turn and coming back here a little bit but I want to explain this I went to 
get my physical, and they found a mass, a large mass in my abdomen. And uh, that was when I was going to work for the police department. That was when I was going to, they were going to put me on. And so when I came back, and I know I'm not making sense, but you can tell, ask me later, and I'll try to explain it to you. But when, when uh, I went for that physical, I had to go straight. Not too many weeks after that, I had to go get a, a total hysterectomy. I was 31 years old. And the doctors said that when, when my test came back from that, whatever it was, mass they took out, they said it was, it, at that time it was like, st the cancer was five, stage five, and mine was four. I've never had any problems in, since then. All of that was taken out and taken care of. But when I went to go back and get that job with the juvenile division, they said, we have changed the rules. You will have to go into a uniform patrol position first. And that's when I made that prayer, and God still kept saying no. He had a plan, but he just, but I was just too foolish and too, too uh, excited and anxious to even follow his plan. I, I just didn't know how to get his plan at that time. I just... 31 years old, you know, so I said, okay, I'll just take the meter maid job. Well, I took the meter maid job, and I wasn't happy on that job either. I, I went for about, uh, I don't know how many months on it, and so finally I just said, Roy, I, I, got to, I got to quit. And I said, God, he's not pleased with this. And so, and he didn't understand about hearing from God at, at that point in time, but he, he, he did know that when if I said it that he knew that I had heard from God and anyway we I, I left that job and I went back to the beauty shop but anyway that's all uh, another story but what I'm trying to say this morning is that in line with the word of God praying and listening to what the Holy Spirit of God says to do and then do it you know, once you know that you know that you know you do it. And it doesn't matter what it looks like or what kind of obstacles it looks like that you're going to face. And I'm going to give you A, B, C, and D on, under that. Believe the word of God. Pray in tongues. Be obedient to what God tells you to do. Pray and wait on God to find out. And to find out what his plan is, one, two, three, is for your life, his plan for your life, for your ministry, for your church, your family, or whatever he has called you to do. And so I'm going to read here Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. <laughs> Our understanding is what we have when we first wake up in the morning. Before we have time to talk to God and find out what he wants that day I mean I've had some of the most beautiful experiences about just uh, finding out what God wanted and ended up going places and doing things I never thought I would do you know so it's just it's 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 awesome it's actually actually it's exciting to find out what God wants and do it um the verse six in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall, that is a legal term, shall. And that means there's no doubt about it. And other things it means, you might have a better definition. He shall direct your path. Now, I, I got thinking about that, about acknowledging him. Set your hope and confidence in him and have a, have a relationship ship with him know him relation let me see if i can I, I had a hard time saying this word but i'm gonna sit if i can i broke it up relationally know him relationally right relationally okay so <clears throat> anyway and then verse seven the first part says excuse me Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. If, if we're seeking God about something, we can't be wise in what we think. 
we got to be wise in what God is telling us to do and what he's showing us to do. We can get off, we can be, I, well, I heard a story, my husband told about this before, it's about a man in Florida that God wanted him to go to this church and he wanted him to, he only had a few people. And um, or that was the other way around. It was a big church. He wanted him to go there. And the man wanted to get involved in this small ministry, and so he, he decided that he would just go there instead. And he never was happy there, and he realized that it's not always what it looks like. It, wherever you are, you plant yourself there and and learn what God wants you to do, but also do it when you find it find out about it but what i'm trying to say here is is that sometimes it looks like and it could be the other way around with that story and the man could have said oh god i know it's got to be the big church you know and then he he goes to the little church because he knows that's what knows that's what god says and he ends up having a very successful ministry, not a lot of lost souls saved. When people go to the mission field, I talked to a girl uh, the other day uh, who had a booth. I went with Debbie and Mitchell over to this convention thing for mission, for missionaries. And I talked to this girl from Tibet. She's a, she's a missionary called to Tibet. And she said, Jeanette, she said, when, when, when you go over there to minister and if you get one person saved, they know that that means the end of their life. She said the only way you can really reach them is to get the, the, the village leader, get him saved, and then he will let everybody in the group get saved. Want to say what I said? And she said that's the only way you can do it. She said it takes years and years and years to do that. But she was so excited about the thoughts of getting to go over there to Tibet. And I, I put her a little card on my in there in my prayer and when I, where I pray and I was I don't remember all the time to pray for her but uh, just just pray for a missionary who's trying to get to Tibet you know it's these missionaries when they go a lot of times they can't win they'll go and they'll go in a Muslim area and they'll not even get one person one convert they can be there 20 years or 30 years and not ever get one convert but they have made a a statement with their life they followed God because it's not always you if you follow God it's all gonna be happy and it's gonna be just times that you're gonna just everything's gonna go your way oh my goodness <laughs> I'm getting way off of this message we, we have to depart from evil and not be wise at our own eyes I pray just about every day to the Lord that I will not think of myself more highly than I ought to think. And and if if somebody and people are so kind and they say kind words and and uh, and do nice things for me and I, I afterwards I don't want to embarrass them but I'll just lift them on up to the Lord. Any praise that we, sh we receive for anything we do for God, we know it's all God. So we don't, do, we don't own it. it. God owns it. We lift it up to him. Somebody asked Corey Tin Boom one time, said, you know, Corey, I, I don't see how you can handle all this praise and all this stuff where people have you in their, their countries and they talk about being, you know, part of the, holo not the Holocaust, well, I guess so. She was, they were, hiding Jews in their home and she's the only one that survived out of her immediate family she had cousin uh, nephews that that survived but she did she didn't survive I mean her family all of her family did, did not survive but she was always winning souls as much as she could while she was there and when she came out of it she went around the world telling people what happened over there and and everything and they say well how, how can you handle that she said well she said I, I just think of a, a bunch of balloons you know and I just lift them on up to the Lord and with the balloons and just say Lord these are for, these praises are for you this honor is yours 
this this kind word that somebody said about me she said it's yours God I just lift it on up to you so we can't take credit for what God does and but we can know I just got this little statement I put I, I put in my office and I'm getting off this message but I'm just trying to follow the Holy Spirit I got this by my I have it stuck in my house in different places at times. But right now I got it stuck on this book. The only, it's what Wigglesworth said this. He said the only way to get up is to get down. We're, we're not to think of ourselves more how than we ought to think, but we're not supposed to think that we're supposed to be a rug to walk on either. And I, I, don't, I don't know why I said that because I wasn't in the main message. But anyway. Um, I want to try to get back into this this next verse. It's um, Matthew eleven twenty-eight through thirty. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, or let me disciple you let me lead you this is God talking take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy sweet easy to bear and my burden is light now you might want to know why did you put that in in those scriptures because the yoke from God is is easy we don't have to labor to get there we have to believe we have to we have to yield we have to seek his will and then we have to yield and we know that it's going to go this this church is going to keep going I've heard all kinds of statements but uh, I don't listen to them because I know that this church was built by God this church was founded by God he used some people that didn't know what they were doing to get it started and and I still don't know what I'm doing some of the time, but and, and at my age, I'll probably say some things that you don't even understand because I don't even know what I'm saying half the time when I'm just talking. But I'm, I'm standing up here and giving God's word. You have to listen to that. We can put a yoke on ourselves if we don't, or we can put on his yoke, which is sweet. Our yoke of ministry is identified with his yoke. Now, I remember Shambach told Now, Shambach was the other past minister I was talking about. I love to hear Shambach. And Roy said I liked him better than him, but not really. I liked Roy's preaching better than anybody's. But Shambach came next. I love to hear him preach. He's an exhorter like Barnabas. The Bible says that Barnabas was a, an exhorter. Well, Shambach was an exhorter. And so... Anyway, he went to his, he was about 10 years old, and he went to his uncle's farm. He'd never been there before. And, uh, and he went up to his uncle, and he kicked him in the shin. And he said, what are you doing? He said, he said what about that? He said, you see that big, strong, heavy horse over there? He said, you've got it on a yoke with this little horse that can't hardly move and, or walk, and he's, he's, we he's a weary horse. You know, he's just not, he's not, uh, I see, a, a, he's, yoked, he's raped with a weak horse and yoked um, with a stout horse. He had them yoked together. And he said, you can't do that. You need to, to, to get that little horse out of there and, and put a, a stronger horse in there because it can't pull that weight. <laughs> Sorry. And his uncle said, you don't understand. He said, that stout horse is pulling all the weight. He said, the weak horse is just going along for the ride. So we have to remember sometimes these things that we try to make we strong, we try to make things happen, but God has got a plan to make them happen, but we just have to follow, follow, follow. 
I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to pull it with water. <clears throat> if we let him take the lead, he carries the load. I remember when <coughs> we first started <coughs> that church over on that little in that little building. Another side of town, I can't remember the name of the road. Do you, Ricky Rutherford, what was the name of the road? It was on. Maybe it was, I'm not sure. But anyway, Roy said, uh, he, we, he said, I, I just can't, uh, you know, take a salary. I won't take a salary. And uh, the, um, the man that had the building, he said, Roy, he said, you have to take a salary. He said, well, he's always given to God, but he didn't take from God. You understand? Uh, we didn't because we both worked for a while. And then boy made me quit. <clears throat> and when he did, uh, I thought, well, you know, before that, I thought, now if he's, he keeps talking about one day he's going to step out and he's going to tell Ricky to get his things together or whatever, he's not going back to work. Do you remember that, Ricky? And he said, that's the day I'm going to step out and I'm going full time. So I thought, well, I guess I'm just going to have to work the rest of my life to keep him up, you know, because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but God had a plan. He had a plan for a salary from Roy. And and then later on, we, I had a little salary, and he still he had a bigger salary. Salary once so we started and over here and here, and we were in Powdersville for a little while, other places for a while. But when we bought the land and, and moved it here over there, uh, he began to take a salary. But the man that was going to give him the salary, he was buying a preacher and so we didn't understand I didn't understand and Roy didn't understand either but what he was doing was getting Roy to build the church up yeah and see he had some false doctrine this, this man did and as soon as he got it built up so far the man decided that he wanted Roy out and he was going to take the pastorate I mean, you run into all kinds of things, and people will do you wrong, but God always knows how to handle it. So we found out that there was a little, there was a, a Presbyterian church right across the road from where we were, where Roy was preaching there. We just moved our stuff over there. He wouldn't let us, the man wouldn't, he said, I own all of this stuff, and I own this building. He, he wouldn't let us take anything with us. No, no sound system, no microphones, no nothing, because we had helped bring the money in to buy stuff like that but but the guy wanted the whole thing and he everybody Roy just got up one day and he said he didn't say anything about the man he said listen he he wants to take the church and uh, he said but uh, we're going to move over here next door <laughs> upstairs where they have AA and we're going to go up there and we're going to have services up there and and, uh, and and said he said you can stay here and and that's fine if you decide to go with us we've got a place you can come with us so we rented a place up there so when when the time came that there's only two people well his family his daughter and children and the guy that worked for him they didn't come with us and you know we didn't try to talk them into it or anything like that we just went and let us know let them know where we was going to be and that was it and I think before that Jenny though that's when you and brother Jimmy started was with that with that man on that building you remember that I know you do uh, probably because Roy would not proselyte the church he went to he did not try to take anybody out so he uh, the church that we belong to faith assembly so he and one day, I guess we went to visit Jenny and Judy when they first came to that church. I don't want to go into whole detail. But anyway, they ended up coming with us, but Roy never asked them to. But Brother Jimmy said to Roy, if you ever start a church, Roy, I'm going to your church. And that's how they got started with us. But we did not call them. We did anything, try to talk them into it or anything like that. We did not ever believe in proselyting another church. 
and if uh, if we we don't like to go we will we won't go over here uh, across the road over there and say you know y'all really need to come with us but now if god sends them over here we will not turn them down you know i'm saying that but anyway <coughs> If we let him, the Lord, take the lead, he carries the load. We just go along for the ride. So how can we do that? By trusting he knows what is best and he will always come in, come in every situation. We really, we really need to confess that we're trying to lead if we are trying to lead God instead of him leading us. And we also need to yield and repent for our feeling that way, trying to make things happen. It never works to make try to make things happen. And ask God to take charge and lead us. Now I want to read, uh, I'm going to read this out of my Bible here, Luke 10. I left out some scriptures, but I'm going to look at Luke 10, 11 through, 17 through 24. And I think a lot of you are familiar, familiar with it. And you know what, where I'm probably going here, but I didn't until yesterday. There was no, I said, oh, the God gave me the scriptures. Okay. Je the, Jesus had sent the 70 out, and they came back rejoicing. And in verse 17, he says, and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fell fall from heaven behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you but then he comes in with the last part of that and this is what I'm God, what I'm going to finish with. I believe this is where the Holy Ghost wants me to stop. He says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What he was doing is taking him back to, to, the, fir, to the first, the best thing of the best thing is that serving God and, and, and God doing that through you, you, that's good, that's wonderful to be used by him. If you never cast out a devil, if you never uh, see people healed or anything like that, but if you're walking with God and you know that you're finding out what his plan is and you're following his plan, then, then you know you're on the right path. I, I will say this. I, like, I have a scripture that I really love to... Um, quote sometimes thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and I believe what he's talking about a lamp unto my feet the light shines on where you are and, and you may have another you know interpretation of that and the light unto my path and I believe it means is where I am going or headed it, the path is lit up for you to see see God through his word and, and through prayer you can do the most wonderful awesome things for God but you ha he gives us talents talents too he gives us gifts and we can use those gifts but we got to find out what God wants and let him show you how to do it. He wants us to not be burdened by our ministry. He, he wants us to realize that he's pulling the load. It's like when we first started getting money coming in, you know, uh, for, for, you know, ties and stuff. We weren't used to all that. Although we went, did some Bible school stuff and um, Bible training. We both were uh, licensed by the AG, Assemblies of God. And then when we had, went in our own ministry, then Roy, was he was ordained under full gospel. And then I was ordained under Liberty Ministries. And not at my choice, he came and got me and said, you coming on up here, we're going to ordain Ricky, and you're going to ordain you too. And I said, okay. I just went on, 
with him. Because, see, the other day I said, I, I know where my place is, if I'm in my place. But do you know, for a long period of time, I thought I was just doing what Roy asked me to do over the years. And, 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 the, and I was following God, and I was talking to him, and I was praying to him and everything. But in my, my dumb mind, that dumb part of my mind, I don't know what the part of the brain that is, but I was sitting over there, and he said, you are in your place. You know, because I guess too, with my age, I was thinking that, but not anymore. I'm, I'm just gonna do what he says do. I'm gonna give what he gives me, and then I'm gonna shut up. So right now, I'm just gonna ask you though, if you would like to come up and talk to the Lord and ask him what he wants you to do and what his plan is for your life, this is a good time to come to the altar for that. And Ricky, would you put on two coats? Oh, Ricky, sorry. I know your name. You just give me a minute, <laughs> Ronnie. <laughs> and would you come come and just talk to the Lord and just say, Lord, if, if I'm not in your plan, I want to be in it. Just lead me the way you want me to go. And, and he has a plan because he has a purpose for every person that's born. So if you'd like to come to the altar and just talk to him a few minutes about it, you already know what you're, what you're doing. You just want to come up and thank him for doing what he's doing in your life, which I'm going to do that too. Just, just come on up.